social change. I'm going to start with a very short poem and um, it'll get worse. Union by Jen Benka. Locked link. A line of strangers hoping for the other's kindness. Inevitably have to defend themselves. This poem is by Bobby Gibson from a book called Skirmish. This poem is called Fortune. Every image fosters an image. Each act enacts itself. If the animals could speak, we might be surprised to learn that what they've been so desperate to tell us is that many are in tremendous pain. The farthest you can travel from these kinds of thoughts is to never father the very children who have them. Good news, it may not be too late. If you want to know whether or not your Mississippi works, look down from above to see if its leaves are moving. And one more poem from Skirmish also called Fortune. Your national anthem is whooping cough. Lava is belched forth from the bottom of an unexplored sea. At some point, your idea of a good time became simply the idea itself. Somewhere the assholes are comparing cell phones. Somewhere the insurgents are huddling in a cave. Before wheeling the mannequin into the elevator, the stylist unscrews its arms. Some parts of us will always be extraneous. Your neighbors are about to name the new school mascot after an animal the neighborhood has never seen. These poems are mine. Cultural climate. On the centers of frozen lakes, they built crystal palaces of ice to demonstrate their faith that climate was immutable. The study of paleontology and geology was outlawed. Apostates were flung into glacial rifts and moulins. But certain academics concealed ancient records and core samples, pretended to elicit but winked at affairs in storage closets to mask proscribed instruction. Long after no laws could conceal the cascades of meltwater or dwindling snows, it was still fashionable in those shrinking glassy realms to burn the wood of forest upon lost forest in suspended cages of black iron, to pretend to shudder with cold. Radiance. A year ago, we all flushed a little brighter, helium tongues flickering in spent kisses our spectra emitting hues further beyond the pale range of visible light than ever before or since. Fusion anomalies are to be expected, but we were nevertheless a shade discouraged at the ominous, unjustified, no doubt, implications of our decline. We assured ourselves that it was a quirk, a minor divigation, only a blip in terms of chronology taken as a whole. Beings of pure energy, who were we to be bound to the predictable? Not for us, the quotidian statistics of steady radiation, the elementary recirculation of particles. We would flare and bloom when we chose. 
disparate and arbitrary. Surely individual actions toward private good could never lead to destabilization. While we mutually assured each other that the event could be safely ignored, all entities privately resolved to increase their own output, output for personal benefit. We smoldered sub rosa, wrangled over domain, threw caution to the stellar wind. The stories surrounding us were chambers of dissipating smoke as we detonated our carbon core. Bright petals from a blown blossom, we drifted on an eternal river of night. Guests was what we called the prisoners. The term for us was contractors. We saw ourselves as insouciant sunbeams, a cult of gentlemen rogues rendering extraordinary service, wielding scientific methods. Sometimes just our fists were enough. Ultraviolet lights glared around the clock. Gook was the yellow syrup they exuded under applied stress, which resisted scouring from interrogation room floors, no matter what corrosive chemical rinses and surfactants were applied. We had the cafeteria wait staff remove the reminiscent mustard from the condiment Lazy Susans and blunt the cutlery. We threw bread balls and surfed on the sizzle of duty-free liquor, transported all the way from the world. We requested medical treatment for our repetitive motion trauma and demanded personal rainbows of numbing pharmaceuticals. Clearly, flaws were already present. Organs that might not have corresponded to ours burst like eyeballs swollen with glaucoma or rupturing souffles. The fluid spewing out reminded us of the slick, inspirational harangues a representative from HQ delivered at every week, propped at the rec room podium while we fossilized on folding metal chairs. Flowcharts slid into view titled, Results Are What Counts, as he prodded the controls, promising bonuses. He said, advantage and incalculable, and what sounded like gold rush. His entourage gawked at the parade as we herded guests to a narrow stretch of shore where we kept them behind electric nets between sessions. Ponderous as glaciers or cumulus rising into windless air on a summer evening, they looked like miniature belugas or giant albino muskrats, bellies billowing in the shallows as they huddled together. Not mammals, despite their warmth. Not like us. The poignard spike of keratin jutting from each orbital ridge was removed surgically at intake processing. The greeting ritual, we called it. We gave them names, marshmallow, cream puff, cool whip, scarified them with ID markings. They never made noises in the audible frequency range, but we started wearing headphones anyway. Dark lenses and heavy gloves were already part of our uniforms. One of the dishwashers let slip what the first behavioral psychics had discovered. Our guests were only hapless remnants of a dimensional cartography expedition, come to grief when their energy devices failed, marooned in an unknown universe with entirely different physical laws, and imploring us for sanctuary. Less gullible advisors were quickly sent to oversee us, stun batons poised. Guests were stubborn, we were told, and could withstand further vigor. We ran into snags. Our glowering controllers applied a sort of triage. 
those ruined irreparably would serve as examples to the others. Surely survivors would bargain as they became desperate and reveal their arcade inheritance. We underwent further motivational conditioning. Some of us were also used as examples. When in Kuwait panic set in, our replacements were already in orbit above the facility. We knew then that no one was going home. After flooding the administration dome with gas, we went down to the shore for the last time.